Some time ago I was trying to see how it would look like to walk on a 4D sphere. I decided to code up a simulation that you currently see. First step I needed to take was figure out how 4D rotations work. When you're on a sphere movement is a rotation in itself so it was a very important problem. At first the problem seemed exceedingly difficult. Over time I managed to find strategies to conquer the problem. There are many reasons why you'd want 4D rotations. Recently there are a few 4D games starting to get popular. For example, this is a 4-dimensional version of Minecraft that was trending recently and some other games like 4D Golf are in the process of making. They can also be used in interesting simulations like Particle Life in the 4th dimension. Besides them, games like Hyperbolica that are in curved spaces also use 4D rotations. For practical uses they can help you understand space-time rotations in 3 dimensions. Some details will be omitted during the video to keep the flow. At the end of the video there will be a section with some extra segments explaining them in more detail. For most of the video I'll be following how I solved the problem. Before I got to the map I wanted some way to visualize 4D rotations. Normally when we think of rotations we imagine the space rotating, but in 4D we can't really do this. Instead we will visualize the space of rotation. In my interpretation it's everywhere we can get a point just by rotating it. In 2D we get a circle. In 3D we get a sphere. In 4D we get a hypersphere. These are easier to visualize and one way we can is by flattening dimensions. Here we have a flattened circle on the right where we collapse the y-axis. In 3D we flatten sphere to circle by collapsing the z-axis into the green point in middle. In 4D we flatten the hypersphere to normal sphere by collapsing the Y-axis into the yellow point in middle. There's one more way to visualize 4D sphere. We can imagine a 2D being walking on the surface of a sphere. Here, in whatever direction we go we arrive back to where we began. Like how 2D beings can walk on 3D sphere we can walk on 4D spheres. On 4D sphere it looks familiar, but we have new axes with yellow points representing the Y-axis. Again, in whatever direction we move, after a while we return to where we began. My next step was to figure out what do I even want. In 3D, rotations are usually solved by rotating around an axis. But how do we define them in 4D? In 2D, we rotate around a point. In 3D, it's no longer a point, but a line or axis. And in 4D, it's no longer a line, but a plane. It's difficult to imagine rotating around a plane, so I decided to find another way. One way to define a rotation is by moving from A to B in the space of rotations by some angle. Here we have point C showing us the rotation. In 3D we can do the same. We can define rotations in the same way in 4D as well. On a flattened sphere the movement looks like an ellipse. Let's move a dimension higher. There we only see the flattened version on which rotation seems like an ellipse. We can also look how it looks from the perspective on the sphere. This seemed as a more intuitive solution how to define rotations for me. So I decided to choose this function as my goal. 
Now I could finally move on to solve the function. Currently, I didn't know how to solve rotations from A to B directly, so I started trying out different things. First thing that came to mind were plane rotations. They are rotations between coordinates or axes. In 2D we can only move from X to Y and vice versa. In 3D we have more of them as there's also an Z axis now. There's one plane rotation for every combination of coordinates. When we move from 3D to 4D we get 12 of these rotations. These rotations are easy to implement using matrices. More on that will be in extra. As the rotations here can be done using matrices, let's look at some of their useful properties. First of all, it's easy to compute the inverse rotation, which is the rotation in the opposite direction compared to the original one. If we apply rotation and then its inverse rotation, it's the same as if we did nothing. But probably the most important property is that we can combine rotations. If we have two rotations A and B and we multiply their matrices, we get a single rotation that works as if we did them in some order. Before we continue, I need to introduce some more ideas. First, value exchange. Here you can see the coordinates of the rotating point as colored slopes. When it's above the letter, it's positive and when it's below, it's negative. With plane rotations, we can exchange value between two coordinates. For example, here we exchange value between Y and Z coordinates. This nicely extends to 4D, where we can distribute the value between four coordinates. Another function we need to understand before moving on is 8 and 2. Here we have a point somewhere in the xy plane. 8 and 2 tells us the angle to one of the axes. From which axis depends on order of inputted coordinates. Just know that we can know the angle to any axis. With that we can rotate point to it. In the context of value exchange it tells us how much exchanging did happen and if we want, we can reverse it and move all the value back to one of its axes. Last piece of puzzle we need are spherical coordinates. They are a way to describe a point on a sphere by two angles. We can represent the angles by two plane rotations. First the beta angle by moving to or from the z-coordinate and for alpha angle we rotate in the xy plane. Knowing spherical coordinates of a point allows us to create two rotations that move a point from origin to our point. Let's call these point rotations. It happens that converting coordinates from Cartesian to spherical is pretty easy requiring only basic trigonometry. More on that in extra section of the video. Now that we have point rotations, we can also create their inverse rotations which are rotations that move from some point to origin. To note, this isn't a nice rotation that works in a straight line, but has some extra rotation which makes it hard to work with. First, we visualized the space of rotations. Then, we set our sights on what kind of function do we want in the end. After that, we learned few useful tools like plane rotations, value exchange, 8 and 2, spherical coordinates, and point rotations. Now we can move on to create the function in 3D. What we want is a function that creates a rotation from point A to B by theta degrees. First, let's look at an ideal case. Here point A is on origin and B is on xy circle right to A. In these conditions all we need to do is an xy rotation by theta degrees. 
Solving this might seem like it's pretty much useless, but it isn't. What we can do is perform a perspective change. First, we use a transformation to simplify our situation to ideal case, then perform our rotation and then undo the simplifying, bringing everything back to place. This process is often called change of basis. The blue point is here only to show the rotation. So, how do we simplify? Our first tool that we have are point rotations. By performing inverse point rotation, we can bring any point to origin. Let's do this with point A. After this, point B will be anywhere on the sphere. Now we can see that all value of point A is on its X coordinate. This means that we can perform Y, Z rotations, which aren't affecting point A. This will be our ticket to get point B where we want it. We can use H and 2 to find its angle from Y axis and rotate it back. In context of value exchange, we can see how much exchange has happened between the Y and Z coordinates of point B and reverse this exchange to bring the value back to Y. We can combine our point rotation and flattening rotation to create our simplifying one. After this, we are left with the ideal case where we apply XY rotation by theta degrees. Last step is to perform inverse of simplifying rotation and we're done. With this, we created our function in 3D. For d will be solved similarly, but we will have a few differences. So, we want the function that rotates from a to b by theta degrees on a 4D sphere. Our ideal scenario remains the same, in which we only need to perform xy rotation to rotate from a to b. We're gonna use perspective change like we used with 3D. First, we simplify to ideal case, then perform xy rotation and then unsimplify. But before we start, we need to look at one more thing. In 3D, we had spherical coordinates with which we could create point rotations. In 4D, we have hyperspherical coordinates. They include the alpha and beta angles, plus gamma angle, which seems to rotate in a straight line towards the center. This is similar to how beta angle looks on a flattened circle. But now, in 4D, we only see the flattened version. We can also perform the angles with plane rotations like we did in 3D. First gamma, second beta, and third alpha. With this, we can do point rotations in 4D. Now, we move on to solve the problem in 4D. We start with bringing point A to origin by doing inverse point rotation of it. After that, we're left with point A on origin and point B somewhere on the hypersphere. Point A has all its value on X coordinate right now. That means that we can rotate or exchange value between the Y, Z and W coordinates which aren't affecting point A. Now we want to bring point B to the X wiring to get to the ideal case. Here we can use value exchange. A102 tells us how much exchange happened between two coordinates. Using this we can convert value from W coordinate to the Z coordinate. After that we can repeat the same process to pass the value from Z coordinate to Y coordinate. After this point B is in place. With this, we finished our simplifying rotation. Now we do xy rotation by theta degrees in our ideal case and apply unsimplifying rotation. With that, we solve the problem of rotating from a to b by theta degrees in four dimensions. You might have guessed, but this is extendable to any number of dimensions. If you want to try some of the demos or look at code for 4D rotations, links are below. Thanks for watching till the end. 
If you want more magic like this, please subscribe, like and we can move on to the extra section. Here I'll shortly explain how some things are done, not how mostly. First, the plane rotations. I have prepared a 3D matrix here and I labeled the basis vectors. If we want to do a plane rotation, for example, from X to Z, we put cosine of the angle where basis vectors had one and sines in the coordinate of the other vector. For X vector, we put sine in the Z coordinate. For Z vector, we put sine in the X coordinate. Also for the second basis vector in our rotation, we put a negative sign before its sign. Next are inverses. For matrix that encodes rotation, its inverse is its transpose. And we get transpose when we flip values around the diagonal of a matrix. Converting from spherical to Cartesian coordinates nicely scales with dimensions. Here I have hyperspherical coordinates being converted to Cartesian. From the equations we can also figure out how to convert back from Cartesian to spherical. One last thing I wanted to add are double rotations. In 4D we have four coordinates and as rotations happen in planes we can do two rotations at once while they are being independent from each other. Here's the demo showcasing it.